I'm Tony D. And one pot black bean and pepper soup is just one of the delicious meals I've tried through HelloFresh. With over 50 menu items and market items to choose from each week, you'll never run out of dishes to try. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code AWFUL16 at HelloFresh.com slash AWFUL16. Does Jesus go take a shit at this point in the movie? Yes. Oh, it had to be a number one. It had to be a number one. You think one. it was a one? I, okay, I think it was a deuce. No, uh, Jesus did not come down from heaven to take a shit in a terrible diner. <laughs> Get your head on straight. <laughs> now I'm picturing him in the back of the car. God is driving and he's like, do you want to take a shit before you go down to the diner to save that guy's soul? No, I'm no, fine. I'm fine. Okay. Once you start going down to the diner to save that guy's soul, you won't be able to stop. <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to God awful movies where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host Heath Enright and I'm joined by the pegapugnacious Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? I'm fantastic Heath. As our listeners are hearing this, I imagine that I am watching you Noah, Thomas, and Nicola play code names with guns to each other's heads. So I imagine I'm very happy. I feel like that's it's a we, we enjoy it's a fun game. It's we're, everybody's just having fun. <laughs> the only way to play though, you you got to take it seriously. And with that out of the way, back again by very popular demand. We also have veteran guest maskist Jessica Bloomke Greif from the Friendly Atheist podcast, and also Cooper Duper, a Twin Peaks podcast for regular people. Jessica. Welcome back. Thank you so much for having me back on, boys. Very excited. Ooh, and we've got an amazing movie. Do we not? Jessica, Y'all. what are we going to be breaking <laughs> down today? We watched Late One Night. It's the story of a sociopath who meets a psychopath in a diner, and they almost brawl. They do. And boys, yeah, they do. guys, 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 do you know when this movie was released? Because I looked it up while I was snooping around IMDb. Okay, I I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. Yeah. I am gonna say 1980. Okay, I think that's off. I'm gonna guess based on the looks of the people, like 2000. Okay, it was released on September 1st, 2001. <laughs> no, <laughs> I screamed okay. when I saw that. See? Okay, this is what happens when you make movies like this. <laughs> Movies have now consequences. The, the worst thing that happened in September that year. Uh-huh. That's good to know. <laughs> Artistically. Hashtag never forget. Sociologically. All right. Well, gives you an idea. Eli, exactly how bad was the worst thing that happened in September of 2001, the movie? Yeah. Well, if you've always wondered what happens when the pathetic neediness of a sexual harasser meets the psychotic confidence of a street preacher... You will love this movie. It's, I hope the whole place burns down the movie. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever watched a movie and been rooting for roof collapse or an (laughs) onset accident? Well, then you'll love this movie. Every week, Eli, every week. (laughs) All right. Well, is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? This is a tough one this week. Yeah, this is tough. I said best, worst use of mid-20th century slang. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, and it's not set in the mid-20th century, I don't think. You're a phony! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. They're supposed to be in, like, modern times, right? The characters? It, it seemed to be. Except for one supposed flashback. Supposed to be contemporary. Yeah. yeah. So, I actually, I empathize with this movie's inability to talk like a human because this movie is going through what I went through at a toy store. Because... As we've spoken about on the show before, me, Heath, no, we all worked at a toy store, except fuck is every third word that I say. Mm. And instead of being able to just not say the word fuck, I started to talk like a grandma trapped inside an escalator for a hundred years. So that's what this movie is doing. (laughs) Instead of being like this fucking asshole, it's like this phony Alan. (laughs) It's like, I'm sorry, did you say phony Alan is your line? Yeah, you know, he's a phony Alan. (laughs) Looks like you hurt your face when you said it, too. Yeah. It's weird. Is that blood coming out of my nose? Yeah, and fun fact, it was coming out of Eli's nose for pretty much that whole time at that toy store. <laughs> sure was. Mm. Terrifying. While he was selling poison balloons or whatever the fuck that was. Hey, legally, those were never proven to be poison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Okay, Mr. X bartender. Oh, we don't give people poison. Okay. That's different. That it makes them happy first more. The My balloons, poison made them the happy. Balloons too. did not make anybody happy. They were horrible. How dare you? You were giving them microplastics or whatever. This guy is just macroplastics. This was <laughs> this was macro poison plastic. Just very big plastic. Very obvious poison, indeed. <laughs> okay, I was gonna go with best worst. Jesus Christ has a goatee. Okay, oh, this boy's look. So. I, okay, the movie was made in 2001, so that's that explains some of it. But mm. a character that we're going to meet that will very obviously be Jesus, turns out to be Jesus, is wearing a goatee. So Jesus Christ, the savior of humanity, according to this movie, came back to Earth and went with a goatee. It's yes. what so if God troubling. was one of us. <laughs> yes. Never slime like one God. of us. Like, it's just... So aggressively, 2001, his whole look, his hair does not match his goatee for some reason. The goatee nope. is like so short. He either purposely like made that decision or they were like, yesterday, can you grow a goatee by tomorrow? And like yep. that was all he could do. It was a mess. Yeah. Cause, cause now you have to picture Jesus Christ of Nazareth up in heaven running into his dad, the God of the universe's room and being like, huh? What do you think? <laughs> Will I fit Get in the with the out. 2001 humans? <laughs> It's like, no, the way to fit in is to be John Legend in a white linen shirt. I keep yeah, telling yeah. you this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm going to go with best worst response to the problem of evil. It's right at the end of the movie. I won't spoil it, but uh, I think it's up there. I think it's up there for. Did they have a response to the problem? Well, I guess we'll get there. No. I missed it. We'll Whoop. get there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Okay. We're going to find out the hard way. Yeah. All right. I'm going to think about that for a second. We're going to take a quick break. And we'll be back to tell you all about Late One Night. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick, and I'm a meme texter. If you're my friend or even a passing acquaintance, the chances are that I'm going to text you between one and 12 memes a day. It's true. It's so many. It's more than that, probably. Yeah, I can confirm. He asks me a lot of horse questions. But if you've been sending out memes at premium rates, you might be missing out on amazing savings with Mint Mobile's Modern Family Plan. Wait, what's what's Mint Mobile? How dare you? Whatever. Mm, it's fine. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. It's true. Mint Mobile gave me a plan to try when they became an advertiser, and now my whole family is on Mint Mobile. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. So I know the baby bulldogs I'm sending to Heath are going to get there fast. Aw, you're getting bulldogs? Yeah, okay, I, have, I do like the bulldogs, but that's like maybe one out of four. Huh. The rest are just TikToks that I definitely don't want to watch. Okay, well, you should, because they're very funny. Anyways, no. use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new wireless plan for just $15 a month, including the modern family plan, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Mint Mobile. Because if I don't text a picture of an angry looking animal to my wife with the caption it you, who will? All right, guys, it's time to write our Christian short film. Let me hear those ideas. Oh, okay. So what about a movie about a guy who doesn't believe in God, right? And he's just the worst. Like, everybody hates him. So one night, he goes to a diner, and he meets this guy who's like um, who's like Christian. Oh, yeah. oh, and he's like a total dick to him, too. Yeah, yes, yes. Like, violently, sociopathically horrible. Exactly. Right, right, right. And the message of the movie is that he gets to go to heaven if he believes in Jesus. Love it. Love it. Love it. Right. I, me so too. Good, I just, right? I just <laughs> worry that if that's what the movie's about, people might take the message to mean it doesn't matter if you're a genuinely horrible person, um, that Christianity only cares about your blind faith. I mean, that's... You just described the whole religion, right? That's the whole thing, I'm pretty sure. And it's kind of our thing. Oh, well, then I guess I'm sold. Fantastic. I'll go get the oldest possible camera. The museum will let us borrow. Yippee. Do it on beta. <laughs> and we're back. 
And we're going to open up the movie on the words Dave Cristiano Films. So, like, really bad start. I was <laughs> rough stuff. triggered back to Cristiano Brothers stuff. But it's just Dave. Yeah, this is the Cristiano Brothers before their mom made him let his brother play, I guess. I feel like if your last name is Cristiano, you got to go by David, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe he thought it was, a, it was a little ethnic for him, so he went to Dave. <laughs> I feel like that's what he did. Uh, I was going to say maybe he was trying to get into SAG or something, but LOL, he is not in SAG. No, <laughs> no. Or whatever the producer's guild is. Yeah, I don't care how far the union has fallen. Yeah. The Cristiano brothers are not in it. In Mm-mm. Spidge or whatever it would be, yeah. So from there, we get a Bible quote, because of course we do. It's Romans twelve twenty one, And it's like the dumbest quote. It basically just says, don't be evil. Be good instead, Bible. I have many complaints about the Bible for obvious reasons, but one of them is just their flagrant fuckery with prepositions. Like, I was going, so I looked up this Romans 12 21, and only the King James Version and the American Standard Version do the like, be not overcome of evil, which is nonsense. All of the other versions are like, don't fall victim to evil, triumph. Like, like how human beings talk in correct okay. words that <laughs> yeah. have meanings. I just don't know why they're insisting on making this language so archaic and dense. Yeah. It, that's just a marketing note for the Bible. Was this like, was this a writer, whoever wrote this part of the Bible, who, who got excited that like, be not overcome of evil, overcome evil with good, well, like, in, in that person's head, was it like a clever switcheroo of that? I think he thinks it's like a turn of phrase, but it certainly isn't. Like a clever turn of phrase is like, don't let evil overcome you, overcome evil. <laughs> That's using overcome and evil twice in a way that flips the meaning on its sure. head. That's how writing works. <laughs> Picturing Johannes Gutenberg taking out his headphones. Damn it, Jessica, that is better than what I did. (laughs) (laughs) I know Gutenberg didn't translate the Bible. He just printed it. I just don't know who translated it. King James, right? Because it's boring. It's the King James version. He did. King James, exactly. It was Moses. Wasn't Moses listening to all this or something? Moses went up to the top of the mountain. Moses had a scribe Mm -hmm. with King James and Ray Comfort. (laughs) And a banana. And and they decided what the Bible was. A Muslim guy or something, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, he was further away because he was like, oh, I recognize that Jesus is like a saint and a real cool guy, but I don't think he's God. So he was probably too far away to get like the God glow from him. Sure. Yeah. Is that an accurate depiction of what Muslims uh, believe in Jesus? <laughs> I, I think it's as accurate as we want to get on this podcast. That right? is the mise-en-scene of that scene yeah. in you know, the history of the universe. Correct. Yep. So now we're going to watch his tragic backstory, but... But the Cristiano brothers don't know how to film anything, so they just like oh boy. have everyone yelling the tragic backstory. <laughs> we call this an exposition dump. It's literally just a dad and a mom being like, I never should have married you, even if you were pregnant. I hate you. Well, I hate you. Well, I hate the kid. And it's like, oh, thanks, guys. Are you? You guys aren't fighting, are you? Are you in an unhappy marriage? I wish this movie was more on the nose. I'm going to yell my social security number in case anyone ever needs to find me. I did like that. This, so this asshole guy yells like, I never should have married you and a bunch of things like that. And his wife is like, yeah, but you're ugly. <laughs> yeah, it's like, OK. Yeah. Cool. Just fucking roast him, dude. Just yeah, burn. roast it up. Good burn. I also loved their fail of Echo for the I hate that kid moment. I wrote the same thing. <laughs> this was weird. So strange. Like your traditional Echo is like loud, medium, quiet, <laughs> and like fades to the background. And this was, I hate that kid. I hate that kid. I hate that kid. Okay. I thought he just said it over and over in like, I didn't think it was an Echo. I actually heard it as like him, him oh. being like, I hate you. And I hate that kid. I hate that kid. I hate that kid. And like, kid, 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 look at me. Look at me. That's look at me. Kid, look, 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 yeah. look at, look at me. I hate you. It flash cuts to him like an inch away from his son's face, just whispering, I hate I you. Hate into his face. Ear. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so that kid, spoiler, is going to turn out to be our main character. We don't know that yet, but that's what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. Last time I was on the show, don't remember what I was watching, but I just kind of clocked that all of the actors' names were like 
bargain basement versions of real actors' names. Yep. And this one, <laughs> y'all, happened again. We had a like Hugh McLean, Hugh McGregor. No, 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 Hugh McLean, and uh, <laughs> Josh Gaffa, Josh Gad. No, Jim Gaffigan. No. <laughs> Taraji B. Henson? Nope, that's my dude, Trevor Henson. Like, <laughs> all of these names are like, oh, do I know that? Nope, nope, it's just... Yeah, no, they got all their actors on Shein. <laughs> 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 this actor looked really good in the video that the influencer showed me. I just, it's not my fault. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, and it takes a really long time to ship, but it's so cheap and the quality's bad, but who cares? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so... From there, we see dad leave, and then we cut to 25 years later. Ugh. That kid is all grown up now, and he's in jail. We watch him getting thrown into a cell. Right, but they, they can't make movies, so it's, it shows him getting thrown into a cell, and then he immediately walks out of the room he was in into a milk jug factory. Mm. So so it appears that he's been sentenced to work in a milk jug factory. Oh, no, I think you're uh, confused again. Now, as a scholar of all things David Lynch, what we are looking at is dream logic. So our oh. director is trying to oh. submerge us into not, you know, things don't necessarily make sense, right? But there's a, a logic to them and a flow. These people are really out of their time. Mysterious ways. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So interesting. I'm pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot like Twin Peaks if you think about it, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. Famously, David Lynch's most famous work. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Late One Night, the Christian film by David Lynch. Uh huh. Oh, I would watch the fuck out of that. Oh, what did he say? He, amazing. he says Eraserhead is his most spiritual film. And if you've ever seen that, it should worry you. <laughs> yep. It does. Eraserhead is a nightmare movie. Pretty much everything David Lynch has ever done or said worries me for him or the people around you. He is a lunatic. I watched a 90 minute documentary about how he thinks transcendental meditation is going to uh, change the world. I just, he's just everything. I love him. He's so straight. He's such a weirdo. Really? Oh, I adore him. Speaking of David Lynch, by the way, that was actually my music note. My music note for this scene with the spooky music was <sighs> David Lynch was just high, you guys. There's not a larger narrative. He's just high. <laughs> Like, oh boy. Like, they do, tr there's like this moment, and then toward the end, when he's like having flashbacks to his like terrible life, which seems mostly consequences of his own actions, but whatever. But like, they try to do the like interstitial, like he's yelling, and then it's like, oh, factory noises, and this is stressful. Like, they tried to do something for like collectively 45 seconds of this movie, but you know, they tried. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A for effort. Okay. So, what they've established in the the dream logic, but in real reality, I think his job in jail was watching the assembly line at the milk bottle factory, or is that his job after he gets out of jail? That's his job after he gets out of jail. Yeah. Okay. That's present day job. Well, the movie's not clear. I don't think the movie was sure about itself here. So his job after jail is milk bottling facility where he just looks at milk. It's kind of confusing. <laughs> and from there, we get a quick cut of him going to a, a bar after work and he spends like 10 minutes trying to slowly say, I would like to have sex with you now to a random woman. And she's like, get the fuck out of here. I hate you. Yeah, I wrote in my notes. He went to the Heath Enright School of Flirting. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I wouldn't have said any of that. Uh, burn. <laughs> I would have said nothing and not Hello. talked to that woman. Today, welcome to the bar you're in. I, <laughs> I might have said that. Don't own it. You own it. Do you? <laughs> Hello. Sex. It's me, Heath. There are many women in this bar, but you're the first one I noticed, and I think I deserve a gift for that. <laughs> I have some pocket cheddar. Do you want? Mm. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Baby exactly. bell. No, it's the I like it's in wax. It's not weird. Is it is it still in the wax? Because I swear to God, if you give me some linty ants, baby unwrapped baby bell. Geez, I'm a gentleman, I'm I keep it in wax. <laughs> Always wrap up your baby, especially now in June of 2022. Uh, it's more important than ever. More important than ever. Love a good Bond bell. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Who doesn't love a good Bond bell? By the way, I will be calling my penis my baby bell from now on. <laughs> I oh, plan to never I don't know if that's again. the brag you think it is, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's the name of one of our miniature horses at the barn that I work at. See? It's baby bell. Nice. Is that interesting? Is this good entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about fucking cheese all afternoon. 
<laughs> Happily. We're really we're really hitting it off here at this bar talking about cheese now, right? Uh, she's leaving. Sure do you love cheese. She's leaving. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the lady in the movie tells him to drop dead. He walks out. I guess the whole point is that he's having a frustrating life. That's what we're meant to learn here. And we're going to, this uh, scene is going to be called back to you later. And he is like, no women will talk to me because God or someone like that. But this is the only like glimpse into his quote unquote flirting technique. <laughs> and I just, I, I know you have a lot of male listeners out there and I just want to give you just some, some advice from your Midwestern 30 something friend. Don't monologue at people. <laughs> they don't like it. Nobody likes it. A lot of broken hearts in the You know what's the key to flirting? Ask people questions about themselves and be interested in the answer. And if they say, leave you alone, leave you alone. Fucking nailed it. I'm going to write a book. I'm the next guy with the hat. Mystery. <laughs> that was, that's like a really simple playbook right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The go away part, I think, is very important if you're told very to Very important. <laughs> so after that, we get some more credits that they forgot about to put at the beginning. And then they reopen the movie. With three guys. So we had two cold opens. Yeah, this is the second yeah. cold open of the movie. This is the tepid opening. The third. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, we, we reopen with three guys showing up to this diner just aggressively. Oh, boy. Yikes. I have never seen anyone walk into a diner with more dominant sexual energy <laughs> than the protagonist of this movie. It is wild. He, like, his energy comes in five feet before he does. He is just like a ball of rage and wig. <laughs> Can we talk about his hair, you guys? Yes. I genuinely was staring at it for so long. And finally, I landed on it looks like film celluloid. Ooh. <laughs> that sort of slick, like strips of film celluloid. It didn't seem mm -hmm. to have individual hairs. It had more of like a... Interesting. I was going to go with Tina Turner wig, but for a baby on a regular man-sized head. <laughs> okay, I like that too. I think though, not to not to poke holes. I like that a little too much. I don't like this guy. <laughs> I like your thing. I think a Tina Turner, you're going to get more height from a Tina Turner wig, you know? Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so these these terrible people, one, one of them with uh, film celluloid hair comes in. Mm -hmm. They're just peeing on the booths as they walk in to mark the <laughs> other territory. They sit down in their favorite booth they sexually harass the waitress, of course, because it's just, you know, classic shenanigans of that. Mm -hmm. Immediately, too. Okay, just to be clear for this character, out of the two scenes we have seen him in so far, he has bothered a woman in two of them. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert, he will reflect on a third scene immediately about bothering a woman. That's, that's going to be a focus. It's his only character trait. Yeah. There's also this fantastic moment where he's like, oh, you're such a good person. And she's like, fuck you. Nobody cares. Everyone hates you. And he's like, ah, we banter. Ladies, right? <laughs> but his response to fuck you, by the way, is that he's not going to tip. Yeah. So, you know, he is truly the worst embodied human that could be in the movie. Horrible. Can I add uh, something to my list of Jess's tips for boys? Yes. Yep. Go. <laughs> Sorry, I just really tickled my... We are renaming the podcast Tips for Boys, by the way. <laughs> I really tickled myself with that one. <laughs> anyway, just for boys. Uh, the other one is don't coerce women by threatening their livelihood in order for them to go out with you. That's not cool. You said don't do that. Don't. Don't. Tell a woman that you will not, she will not get paid for the job that she depends on to feed herself, her family, keep a roof over her head, et cetera. Yeah. Don't threaten to withhold the money that might prevent her from doing so because she won't go out with you. That is just, I'm going to put a star next to that one, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm that's scooch right that up the, the lid. Right, exactly. <laughs> right up there. And you don't tip, you're allowed, to, uh, you sh there should be some serious, crazy, normally not legal things that you're allowed to do if somebody doesn't tip. That needs Some kind be, of ejector If the Supreme seat. Court's going to do one good thing, put yeah. this in. <laughs> Fuck. People are monsters. State by state, even. 
Yeah. And this, by the way, is also where we meet the owner of the diner. Does this guy ever get a name? Jackson. 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 Yeah. They yell it so many times. (laughs) Jackson will serve only one purpose in the movie, which is no matter how badly the protagonist acts, he will apologize to everyone in the room and then let Larry keep acting that way. So wait, did you click? He's the owner of the place. I, 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 I got the impression he was the owner, and oh. he's the cook too. Yeah, I saw. I, yeah, I thought he was just the cook, but that that tracks. Okay, all right. This thing has layers, you know, real deep three dimensional <laughs> characters. We also meet. Actually, this doesn't. I was about to say an important character. No, it doesn't matter at all. But we meet a street preacher for a second, who's outside of the diner, and he's, he's like, "God loves you." Oh, they're gone, and people are just walking right past him. He's doing badly with street preaching. We just see that for a second. Yeah. People are ignoring his pamphlets to set up mostly nothing later. Oh, we do get one little prop. His pamphlet His shows pamphlet. up in the story. OK, I really do hate in these movies when people when they try to drum up sympathy for a character who's doing something like this, just in, a, you know, street corner preaching as if like they're the good guy and everybody else who's just like trying to like get to lunch or pick up their kid who's walking by and ignoring <laughs> right. this man who's demanding their attention in a public space. And it's like, yeah, everyone sure is assholes to you, dude. Like, no, you're still the bad guy. You're the one bothering people. <laughs> no, get out of the way. I'm delivering food to people who need it. Get move. I just, I worked at the uh, Tribune Tower for like two years and truly like, just trying to get to where you're going is so hard between tourists and street preachers and shit like that. It's just, it's, you're juking. You gotta juke. You gotta be fast. <laughs> you gotta be nimble. Soft knees. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So street preachers doing very badly. We go back inside and we see the three assholes just uh, bullshitting with each other about work. And one of them's like, Hey, hey, tell the story about the woman that you're harassing at work. Tell it. Tell, 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 tell the other guy. Tell the other guy right now. And that's what we get here. Well, this is why it's so confusing. He introduces it by saying, so how's your girlfriend doing? And spoiler alert, the entirety of the story will be the levels of sexual harassment uh-huh. like that he has subjected this poor woman to. So much so that his boss in, as we learned, 2001 is like, hey, man, it's 2001 and you're too much. You got to stop sexually harassing this lady. Yeah, I'm very excited to talk about that scene. It's horrible. Yeah. Well, I was also confused immediately when he said, well, how's your girlfriend? He's like, oh, she'll be going out with me by next week. I thought they were talking about the waitress who just left because oh. none of the women have names. <laughs> <laughs> they do not. No. They don't, no. Uh, anyway. No, different, different harass victim. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, we get a doodly do here of shitty guy. Number one, Larry is his name telling the story of the woman he's harassing at work and we watch it happen. Okay. And I just want to get a little meta for a second. Okay. In making this movie, They had one establishing conversation they chose to make us sympathetic to its protagonist, right? They chose one conversation, and that conversation will be, so I'm making this woman's life hell with my sexual advances, right? (laughs) Do you think we're meant to feel sympathy for him? I do not think they did that work for us. Because this is when we learn he's an atheist. Sure, well, that automatically makes him a bad person, but just like, I'm not sure that we're supposed to I, I, that's what I, and we're going to come back to this at the end but I don't understand the arc of this movie because nobody <laughs> or the point of this movie because nobody has a character arc like this guy starts out as an asshole and ends up as an asshole who's like confused so like what are we what's the point of this what did we do here like are, are we supposed to feel, feel sympathy for the guy who's a serial sexual harasser because it's not as if at the end he's like oh I'm going to keep my hands and my words to myself like no what are we doing here no, he's going to learn a much more important lesson about vaguely Christianity, but not that at all. <laughs> Absolutely not. But yes, this is this. We just watch him harass this woman and then like brag about it with his buddies at work being like, she loves me. We don't. Do we watch him harass her? Or do we just listen to him brag about it? Yeah, it's they couldn't oh, even yeah. find an actress like they didn't cast yeah. a woman to be this this person. And I don't think she is. She has a name either. No, nope. literally not named. And so all we get is this like long walk and talk scene like they're in a fucking Aaron Sorkin movie. <laughs> and they're just talking about how he loves harassing women and how fuck Christians. And like, 
end of like it's just so wild it's and his little like gremlins around him what are his henchmen are (laughs) disney villain buffoons yeah Yeah. they're like cackling (laughs) you know dark birds on the shoulders of witches that are like okay you're doing it a little much a hundred percent i was getting vibes of the uh two guys from uh, 101 dalmatians <laughs> yes <laughs> that was my vibe of just like boop, 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 boop. yeah get him yeah say it kid ha ah, you got him this time so like many- all they do is hype him up like they're fucking <laughs> so many times that <laughs> they're, they're actually like Rabble, rabble, like it's constant. Yes, it's ridiculous. Even when they don't know how to support him, right? It'll be like, so I'm harassing her, right? And she says, stop. And they're like, yeah, stop. I mean, don't stop. What do you want us to say? I'm confused. Is this good or bad, my dude? Just go with the general (laughs) ooh, ooh, if you're not sure. So, okay, sorry, Larry. Ooh, ooh, good, got it. Oh, yeah. (laughs) There you go. And again, I just have to point out the Christianity in the Christian film. Whenever he describes bad behavior, he has to remind us it's because he's an atheist. Oh, my God. Right? He'll just be like, yeah, so I'm harassing her, right? She calls the cops. I try to fight the cops, but they have their knees in my back. Anyways, I'm an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to ask sort of a meta question about this scene from you two who have seen many more movies like this. Um, and. Sorry, every episode I'm on, I'm going to see this in a feminist lens. So here we go. These guys. Okay, so our main guy, Larry, he is the one who's saying that he's harassing everybody. And while they're not necessarily being like, hey, dude, that's fucked up. They're kind of like rolling their eyes behind his back and like, ugh, this idiot. So the read I got from it was, oh, this guy's an asshole and all the other guys know it. They're just not doing anything about it. Right. Well, one of them is a Christian. The, the the one good guy, according to the movie, is his buddy Riley, Riley. in the doodly do, who's the one Christian guy at work who's like, you should stop harassing our coworker. She's Christian. Oh, is that who that is? Yeah. The one who's in his Bible study group? Yes, yes, exactly. Oh, so it's a Christian is better than this. What I was going to what I was going to kind of extol is like, I thought. So when I was growing up, I was born in 1985. So in like this era, I'm 14, 15 years old. And that was what I was taught is like, oh, if you just keep asking her out, she'll say yes. Or they're pulling your pigtails because he likes you. And (laughs) that was the culture I was indoctrinated to. And my understanding was dudes just didn't know that that shit is inappropriate. That's always how it's been sold to me. Like, oh, nobody's ever taught dudes that like pulling pigtails is bad because. And you shouldn't have to be taught that. I don't know. Like, no, th- th- we weren't taught that, but we shouldn't need to be taught that. That's insane. No, 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 no. And you've got to add to that that this is through the evangelical Christian worldview. Right. right? So this isn't even like our shitty upbringing. This is the shittiest form of upbringing when we were kids. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. But so I guess my point of confusion, Zen, is In one breath, in one scene, I guess, they are both telling us that, like, yes, men do serially harass women frequently. It's a huge problem. But the Christian right is also going to disbelieve any woman with allegations of abuse. Yes. So they're portraying this. They know this is the kind of behavior that predatory men have. Yeah. But they still don't believe women when they say they are victims of said issues anyway and that confusion is actually exemplified in this next scene with the boss right Mm -hmm. yes because it's written by evangelical christians so we have to watch this boss's dialogue like be in a fight with itself yes he's trying to yell at him yeah oh i'm so excited to talk talk about the boss thing but before we get there there is a moment that i genuinely like my heart skipped a beat because he's in riley I'll pretend I didn't hear that, you fake. (laughs) And I thought he was about to drop some homophobic slurs. And like my heart skipped a beat. I genuinely thought he was about to like call him the F slur. And I was like, oh, this just changed. Oh, I (laughs) feel like that was the fourth time. Yeah, I was going to say. And like they kept being like, don't. Don't use a slur. We'll it. get in trouble. You just can't. You, you got it. And he just barely made it on like the fifth try. The entire blooper reel of this short film is. Oh, my God. I just hate crimes. I just hate crimes. 100%. 100%. So, yeah, we, we get the doodly do about the horrible harassment. And then we get later that day. This is still in the doodly do. Larry, the atheist, 
he's doing his job of watching milk and he gets called into the boss's office for a meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just have to talk. I know we're going to get to the boss's office and the insanity that that conversation is, but I just have to point out that the guy who calls him, he's like, Hey, the boss wants to see you does the, I'll stare at the milk cartons for you while you have oh, your meeting. So it's so funny. It's weird. We get a little glimpse into what that job is besides looking at milk. It's leaning also. There's a lean. Yeah. There's like an arm area mm-hmm. and he like puts his arm. like So there's like a button. There's like a milk safety button that you look at it and you just like you press stop and your your, your arm's leaning on it. And unfortunately, from what I could tell, the, and nothing appeared to be on the conveyor belt that he was watching, which is fine. <laughs> but you know what? Credit where credits do. They had matching uniforms, which they is did. like yep. more than a lot of these movies can say. So, yep. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more than a lot of these films can muster. Yeah. Oh, this is the part, uh, the note I left. In this movie, I don't know if we've said, is like 28 minutes long. And I just left a note. I'm trying to encourage myself to stop pausing because I'm hungry, but I won't eat till I finish this dumb wig movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was so hungry, but I kept pausing. it. Like I sunk that dumb cellular joke. I sunk 20 minutes into that joke because I wanted to make sure I was using the right kind of set. Like I (laughs) was doing anything to avoid hitting play on this movie. It was torture. (laughs) And then I watched it again today because I'm an idiot. Just a beautiful steak dinner getting cold on the table (laughs) next to you. (laughs) Yes, exactly. It's not the inside of a, of an audio cassette. Damn it. What is it? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So now it's time. And again, I love this so much because, Jessica, you set it up so perfectly, right? These are evangelical Christians. Mm -hmm. They do rape apology for a living, Mm -hmm. but we've got to watch their version of a stop sexually harassing your employee conversation. So the boss opens with stop sexually harassing that lady. It's a tightrope that they walk here (laughs) where we are meant to like, right? Larry's the bad guy. Eli, I think you keep calling the protagonist counterpoint. I don't think he's the protagonist. I think he's the antagonist. I think Jesus is the protagonist. Right. He's the person the camera's pointed at. That's very fair. He's, That's yeah. not what protagonist is. He's That's atheist. Fair. He's definitely the antagonist. Yeah. <laughs> so he comes in. All right. So he walks in the room and this guy, uh, this boss is saying to our antagonist, you have to stop harassing this person. We know he's the antagonist, so we know it's bad that he's harassing it. But then we have to watch this dude like couch everything of like, hey, just ignore her. Just pretend she's not there. There is no talk of like disciplinary. At- well, it actually, we'll get to that in a second. There's no talk of like legal actions and here's what a- harassment is and why it's inappropriate in the workplace. Or even that what he's doing is wrong. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. It's just that she's complaining. It's not morally or ethically wrong. Look, we all love a little sexual harassment now and then. You just got one of those broads who doesn't like it, Larry. Yeah. You, know, you got to aim for a different target. His literal response when he says stop sexually harassing that girl is... I'm not bothering anybody. I just yep. wrote in my notes, that is super duper not a denial of sexual harassment. That's the opposite. And objectively not true. He's here because he was actively bothering somebody and she complained about it. It's just not true in any stripe. Okay, and the actual advice from the boss is insane. It's, yeah, he says, technically, I want you to stop harassing this woman. No, but he wants him to do the Mike Pence rule. But yes, right. don't be in a room with her. Yes, it's he says instead instead of doing that, pretend she literally doesn't exist and just never acknowledge her, don't be in the room with her. <laughs> That's insane. This is the I don't see color of sexism. Yeah. <laughs> no, look, exactly. I get it. But here's a little trick that I use to not just invade the privacy and safety of women that I work with. I pretend they're dead. Like I can't mm, see mm-hmm. them like invisible ghosts. You should try that. Sure, ghost rules. But don't try to walk through them because that's going to be bad too. <laughs> so we were kind of getting, like I was saying, like the boss is sort of being like the quote unquote good guy here, right? And then he says, lawyers take this seriously and they run with it. So he just showed his cards, right? Oh, it's yes. not that yeah. you're worried about this woman's safety and well-being. It's you're trying to protect your own ass. Cool. Uh, yeah, I wrote in my notes, look, it's not that we're against sexual harassment. It's the legal consequences that bother us. The, the harassment, you know, uh, whatever. We don't want a bunch of Jewish lawyers walking around in our plant. <laughs> It'll fuck <laughs> mm-hmm. up a whole thing. That And that's it. That's the whole lesson from this fucked yep. up HR slash boss guy. 
There is one moment that genuinely unsettled me in a way that I am not excited about. So it's when he says, I'm not bothering anybody. Well, she says that you're harassing her. No, I'm not. Well, and he says, well, she says you're doing X, Y, and Z. The girl's lying, like yells in a way that really scared me. And it's like, oh, we just watched what happens when a dude tries to be like, oh, we're a boys club. We all do this, right? Women as bitches, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this isn't working. No, she's a liar. She's discredited. Yeah. Like it is. This man is slimy as fuck. His reaction is so violently emotional. I thought he was about to be appointed a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> Woo! Does he like beer, though? (laughs) (laughs) And then this scene ends on a fucking fantastic line. I love it so much. He's like, hey, just so you know, she has value. She actually works at a computer. You stare at milk and just demonstrated in this movie that you can be easily replaced because we watched someone replace you. Stop or you're fired. And his response is, I have ears. This dude... This boss castrated this man. (laughs) He was like, if you don't stop, let me tell you what. I can get a dozen of you by spitting in this street. This woman has skills. She's valuable to this company. You're a stuffed shirt. I still don't know her name, but she's bad. But he does say you got yourself a little devil there, which I found horribly inappropriate. Yep. Ugh, so bad. And then he ends with, again, not I hear you, not I'm going to stop. He ends with, I, I have, have ears. ears. He does an ear-based comment later that doesn't make sense to me either. We'll get to that. I think I think yeah. he just likes throwing, you know, ear-based rejoinders into his stuff. <laughs> they don't make sense. Larry doesn't have a lot going for him. So at a certain point, he just starts naming his anatomy. I, sure. That, that, would, that describes it. That would make sense. Ten fingers, ten toes. <laughs> So the doodly do is over. Apparently, Larry told the entire story of the HR meeting to the guys at the diner. That was part of his story in the doodly do. And now we're back at the diner with the three idiots. Yeah. <sighs> and again, this is their first attempt to like, they have no idea how to encourage him. He's like, yeah. So anyways, I sexually harassed that lady. And the boss pointed out that I'm a worthless person who could be replaced by a literal camera. And they're like, you go. Ma- Sorry, what? <laughs> classic we're atheists no god yeah yeah all three of them are to some extent atheists not just larry that's the other part of this this whole diner crew well they don't believe in heaven as they explicitly say immediately after we come out of this wayne's world flashback as soon as he walked out that door he went and harassed her yep <laughs> and the three dudes are like huh, nice like fucking high-fiving and so once again they're demonstrating that they understand that men will call women a liar downplays what happens, lie to their friends about it, and then retaliate if she reports him. But when someone comes forward with allegations of this kind, they're still like, um, men don't act like this, honey. It's science. Like, it is infuriating to watch play out. Infuriating. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. And uh, we also get a little bit of harassment of Jackson, the cook slash owner guy. Larry yells, hey, Jackson, your life is on the line if this burger isn't well done like I asked. The food's finally come out. So he yells that at Jackson. Then Jackson threatens him. He does. It's yeah. the best. <laughs> it's he's the best like, part. He's, he's trying to do that buddy-buddy thing. He's like, hey, Jackson, this better be good. And he's like, I will kill you for a nickel, man, for a fucking nickel. And he's like, okay, I'm gonna eat my burger. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, Jackson says, your life is on the line tonight. Like, repeating that line back a little bit. and (laughs) As in, if you don't stop this bullshit, I will murder you with this grill. (laughs) Or perhaps, I don't know, some mystical character from religion might show up and affect your life tonight. That's spoilers. (laughs) Well, that's clearly what they were going for, right? It was supposed to, like... Wait. What does he say? What's the line? Your life is on the line? He, yeah. yeah. He, he yells to Jack. Larry's like, your life's on the line. And this burger's not well done. And Jackson's like, your life is actually the one that's on the line tonight. I, I've seen the script. Why wouldn't he say your soul is on the line? That would make oh. more sense. That, w- that would make more sense. Once again, Jessica. These people need to hire me. I yes. am going to be a Christian movie script doctor. <laughs> <laughs> You're covering both sides. You got Friendly Atheist on uh-huh. one side, a little bit of our show. Uh-huh. Christian movie script doctor. You're covering all your bases. I love it. Covering all my bases. No one's going to keep me out of whatever heaven there is. Yeah. 
And now we get my fucking favorite scene in the movie. This is Jesus. So spoilers, little fucking Nickelback goatee. He's uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth returned to earth, right? Are we all in agreement about that? Yeah. Yeah, we're about to meet that guy. He is Jesus for sure. Right. So this guy runs into a street preacher and you'd think Jesus, who has created a system by which people are damned to hell and or sent to heaven based on this man's actions, you think he'd be, I don't know, a little more excited to meet a street preacher, except he seems as bored and bothered by him as all the rest of us. <laughs> this man is the definition of a neutral face. Like he has no, I cannot pull it up in my brain. It has no distinguishing characteristics besides that tiny goatee and just general whiteness. And then he just has dead eyes the whole time. So like on top of the just sort of generic looking white dude thing, everything this guy says, he's just like getting a dead eyed stare of like, yeah. It's just yeah. mayo. It's just all mayo. If you make no choices for your character on Tony Hawk Pro Skater, this actor is what comes out. Right. Yeah. If you just press the A button right away to start. Video game joke. Exactly. You get you get this guy. <laughs> but there's this fucking incredible moment that I'm absolutely going to use. He's like, hey, man, do you know about Jesus? And again, Jesus is like, yeah, no, I know about Jesus. And he's like, oh, um, which, do you know that he died for you? And he's like, yep, I am aware of that. And he's like, ah, OK. Most people tell me to fuck myself and throw out my pamphlets. I don't really... <laughs> know what to do here. <laughs> he's the he's the dog that caught the car. He doesn't know what to do now. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He actually starts to say like, have you accepted Jesus? And Jesus Christ himself is like, accepted him as my Lord and Savior? Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. 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 Don't get it twisted, my dude. Well, and can I just throw this out there? Little bit of a jerk move if you're Jesus Christ, not to mention it to the street preacher outside. Or like, right. show me him just like gently touching his arm, and then later we see him like that guy being prosperous somehow. Like, love it. There are ways that this could be a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is like a, I walk by a guy on the street handing out hard copies of my podcast, and I was just like, "Yes, I'll check this out. Thank you," and walk away. Yes. <laughs> so, Jesus Christ of of Nazareth walks away from a street pe he's being mean to the very dedicated christian guy rude at the very least yeah preacher. medium at best medium at right best. i i guess that tracks jesus is not really great to christian people throughout history so we're going to take a quick break and then we'll see how the coy savior bit plays out in act two of late one night now a word from our sponsor better help hi i'm heath enright and if you're like me Last week or so has been uh, especially stressful. Whatever could you mean? Uh, I'll, I'll get you a new coffee mug. Oh. Anyway, no matter what's stressing you out this week, therapy can help. And that's why there's BetterHelp Online Therapy. That's right, Heath and Jessica. You don't have to be mentally ill for therapy to be useful. It's just an impartial third party to talk with about stress, life stuff, anything you need. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's affordable, financial aid is available, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Plus, our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's BetterHelp.com slash awful. Uh, here's your new coffee, Jessica. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's it's cool. We started ordering these in bulk for Lucinda in 2016. So nice. Ah, another beautiful day of being me, Larry. Good morning, Mrs. Nickleby. Fuck you, Larry. Mm hmm. Hello there, Mr. Postman. Bite my ass, Larry. Mm hmm. Well, good morning, Janine. How's my favorite girl today? I literally reported you in the hopes of getting you fired. <laughs> As usual. Hey, look, boss man. How's it hanging? Literally any chance to fire you, man. Just please put your hands in the machines or something. Always joking. Uh, excuse me? Yeah. Uh, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. Wow. This guy's an asshole. Am I right? Fuck you. Uh, okay. I'm the protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back. When we left off, 
Jesus Christ was treating a street preacher like a like a guy trying to give you a CD in Times Square. And <laughs> now the savior of humanity is walking into a shitty diner. So in the fiction of this movie, is this like an Ebenezer Scrooge thing that like Jesus thought he was so evil that he needed to send three ghosts or himself or whatever to teach him a lesson? Like, is that the fiction of this movie oh, or is he- it just genuinely Jesus just wanders into bars and diners across Whoa. the continental United States. I think he was just, he was just hungry, but yeah, <laughs> he, like doing the, the ghosts of Christmas, like he is three ghosts, right? So like yeah. he can do all three together. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. Also, like, I love the idea that Jesus was like, Oh, this is one of my most lost children. I must reach out to him. But, his only tactic is getting the shit beat out of him and getting nailed to a piece of wood. So he just sits there sadly getting picked on by this guy for the rest of the film. And as soon, <laughs> like, it's not, so we know why this guy is an asshole, right? Among other things, he's a serial sexual harasser and general harasser of people. And so Jesus comes in and is like, you should try reading the Bible, my dude. Yeah. You can't say, hey, respect women and their space and their privacy. Like, this is just the way how like rape isn't in the Ten Commandments, and that's how I know the Ten Commandments are fucking worthless. Like, mm-hmm. there are things you guys could fix and regulate, and you just opted out. So your plan, sure, is go sit, order a chicken sandwich, and get yelled at by a dude. Fine, yeah, cool, Jesus. Great use of your time. To be clear, what the creator of the universe decides to talk about with this known sexual harasser is: you should read the Bible. Jesus is coming back soon. End of conversation. <laughs> And he just, okay, here's the problem I have with this and like people pitching Christianity in general is they just say, just read the Bible. Like, do they want me to start at Genesis and read all the way through? Because that is not a good marketing campaign for Christianity. You cannot be like, (laughs) it would be like if I was like, oh, you know, it's really good. The Harry Potter series. Here's it all bound into one giant tome. Have fun. Enjoy it. Here's J.K. Rowling's tweets. Start yeah. with those. <laughs> so this dude sits down and our man Larry like does the serial like he's really treating uh, Jesus like a the way he would treat a woman who has drawn his ire of like, hey, what's your name? What's your name? And then yells at him about the burger. And then like fucking Jackson comes out and Larry is like, he wants a burger. And it's like, what are you doing, sir? <laughs> this is not how you conduct yourself in public. You don't yell over people like this. You're some kind of atheist? Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is where the alternate take on this character entered my mind that like, maybe Larry's not a, a sexual harasser. Maybe this is literally the only way he knows how to interact with all human beings. I think that theory holds water. <laughs> yeah, I wanted a flash cut of him at the post office being like, oh, hey there, Mr. Postbox. Do you want this? Le-? Dude, it's made of metal. Well, fine, here, I'll put it in. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> just so strange and then he's got like fucking crab and goyle behind him just like <laughs> everything he says is like yeah you tell him larry yeah <laughs> like it's so strange and it feels like so like it's just so strange i can't understand it also he does my favorite thing where he yells i'm just trying to be friendly like <laughs> the worst the worst thing a human man can say. Yeah, Horrible. I'm just trying to be friendly is never that sentence. No. No one has ever said and meant that, right? They're always either backing away from or creeping towards a victim at that Same point. Same with I'm just trying to give you a compliment. Same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing he's going to say is, I thought this was America. Is this not America? That's, that's happening <laughs> yeah. next. Maybe a flag or a gun is coming out. Maybe mm-hmm, both. Mm-hmm. And then Jesus gets up and they all start narrating what he's doing. Did you catch that? Yes. He stands up and the, the guys are like, oh, where's he going? Where's he going? Is he leaving? No, 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 he's not leaving. And like, it's <laughs> so weird. I thought he was coming to sit down at their table, which again is a better movie. Look at this guy. He's walking in a diner. Ha, idiot walking in a diner. <laughs> Fucking bathroom. But this does bring up the question, does Jesus go take a shit at this point in the movie? Yes. Oh, it had to be a number one. It had to be a number you one. You think it was a one? I... Okay, I think it was a deuce. No, Jesus did not come down from heaven to take a shit in a terrible diner. (laughs) Get your head on straight. (laughs) Now I'm picturing him in the back of the car. God is driving and he's like, 
Do you want to take a shit before you go down to the diner to save that guy's soul? No, I'm no, fine. I'm fine. Okay. Once you start going down to the diner to save that guy's soul, you won't be able to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, okay, so Jesus, I'm sure, you know, the person on earth shits. He uses the bathroom. But Jesus is now like the ghost. who. Come, do you think he's using restrooms in this form? This is That was my question. Is there any chance you guys might be overthinking this? I think I'm thinking about this just the right amount. This is all okay. I want to think about okay. about this movie. Okay. Is- all right. Fine. Okay. So if he comes down to earth, he would not come down with a full body. Right. So I think it would have to happen once he ate. And then he would subsequently have to shit. But I don't think he like appears and is like ready to drop a deuce immediately. I th- yeah, I feel like if Jesus sh- like embodied mm-hmm. a la sword mouth with a full colon, there'd be like a, a terse email to the angels, right? <laughs> He'd be like, hey guys, not mm-hmm. to complain or anything, <laughs> love the body, but I can't help but notice that the colon was full <laughs> when I materialized, was slightly inconvenient, got robbed, love JC. <laughs> And then he sends a, the body back with a sticker that says, be kind, rewind. <laughs> that was the only joke I could think of about making sure it's not full of shit when he gets it next time. That's excellent. I'll workshop some stuff and get it back to you. <laughs> Guys, there will be an addendum to this episode of the podcast. Scam 360B. It'll be out in a couple of weeks with Jess's best takes on a bit. I'm going to... I'm going to sell an annotated copy of this so I can explain all my jokes and where they came from and how long I took to think them up. <laughs> the Heath then writes. Right. <laughs> yeah. The answer is always no time at all because everything I say is just garbage that comes out of my mouth. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, the Eli Bosnick story. See, now, now we're switching around. Yeah, I'm in the right place for this. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're in a safe space here, both for over and under thinking. Welcome home. So Jesus goes to... What, number one or number two, something, the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And Larry decides he's going to steal the wallet from this guy. Mm-hmm. Goes into the jacket. He doesn't find a wallet. He finds a Jesus pamphlet from the street preacher outside. So he, he takes that and goes and sits back down. So you think he was trying to steal from him? My read was that he was just trying to figure out who this dude was and was just snooping in just a general assholery way. But I mean, who fucking knows? I feel like he would have stolen too. Maybe, yeah, maybe he just wanted to find out the guy's name because he asked the name and he couldn't get it earlier. And yeah. that's his only mode of interaction. Or maybe, again, he's a sociopath who does not observe our human customs of yeah. what's appropriate behavior and not. <laughs> Unclear. The guy goes, well, Stephen, who I read your name from your license. Now I have a position of power. Now I've got you. Yeah. <laughs> from Oklahoma, I see. Oh. <laughs> Or oh, there's not many tornadoes threatening you. <laughs> How is Tulsa this time of year? <laughs> that panhandle, huh? This has just been you talking the whole time. You, you keep, <laughs> I haven't interjected. Did you want to do another few? Or you, know, you guys go. <laughs> I wanted Jesus to react to the crazy talking more from Larry. He does not. He does not. He does no. not in a really disappointing way. Yeah, no, Jesus kind of acts like an adult who comes to your school to explain that the best way to avoid bullying is to ignore the bully in this yeah. scene. And it's one of his many failed messages. To kill him with kindness. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so what I like about this, first of all, is Larry's fucking golden joke of, that's his name, Jesus. Like, slays himself. <laughs> he is doubled over at how clever he is. Yeah. And then the movie kind of transitions into, like, what I was sort of envisioning as, like, a high school one-act play. Because yeah. all of a sudden you have people sort of, like, arranged around our little, like, stagnant set. And I just thought if these people had any gumption at all, all they would have like filmed this all in one take like they did with like rope or that one episode of haunting of hill house and just like yes just a follow camera it's like a play the tension is rising (laughs) but instead again i'm the movie i'm imagining my head is so much better yeah that sounds great we got the david lynch version of this movie Mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. we'll get the alfred hitchcock version of this movie Mm -hmm, it's gonna mm -hmm. be great yeah i'm into it i'm into it then the mike flanagan version and everybody monologues all the time and it's exactly my shit yeah great i'm in God, Mike Flanagan fucking rules. He really does. <laughs> Just any excuse. Okay, so this is when, yeah, he he names Jesus Jesus and he loves the joke he's just made. And then he reads the pamphlet like 
in Jesus's face. He's sitting down over at the booth. Jesus is at the counter, but he like to continue his awesome prank starts reading that pamphlet out loud. That was his that was his prank. That was his banter, I guess, at this point. Yeah, his his bullying is, hey, I stole your Jesus pet. Oh, you probably got this for free. So. Yeah, I will say this is maybe the only realistic portrayal of an atheist in this movie is the idea of like grabbing a religious pamphlet and like snickering about it with your friends. But <laughs> I would never do it in front of somebody who subscribes to that religion because I have a pathological need to be liked. And that would not drive with that. <laughs> oh, see, see, now you're in the wrong place again, Jessica. You were in a safe place. We would, have, we would ho- tie a person to a chair and do it in front of them on this podcast. <laughs> Listen, I'm in Michigan now. I also b- must be liked and I'm nice to everybody. Yes, I am. It's the Midwesterner. I'm learning. You just have to. I'm in Jersey. I'm a <laughs> yeah, you give a fuck if anybody likes you. You're like, I fucking dare you to like me. Try it. <laughs> See what happens. How dare you have loves? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where he they begin their their back and forth, right? And he's like, "Hey, are you a a Christian?" Or he asks him if he's religious, and he's like, "No, I'm not religious," which is a very weird thing for Jesus to say. Yeah, uh, why? I'm trying to figure out how they would have justified that. Why wouldn't he? Why would he say no? It's not a religion; it's a relationship with himself. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I guess if you're God... He's saying, he's saying, I'm a Christian, that's not a religion, that's just what you're supposed to be, because it's the reality. I think that's what he's going for. Yeah, but, like, if I'm the God in my religion, I would still describe myself as religious, because the religion is pretty important to me, because it's how I got all my power. <laughs> and then we get Larry's first attempt at a burn here. He goes, so are you a hippo? What? A hippocrit? Gang. Oh, boy. Rabble, 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 rabble. <laughs> My skeleton shot out of my body and safely onto the moon because that made me so secondhand embarrassed that somebody wrote that and somebody read that (laughs) and somebody filmed that and somebody put that on TV. Because Hippo is the first to film. And then somebody uploaded it to the internet. Yeah. Are you a hippo, man? Hippocrit? Which, again, okay, so here's the thing about, he keeps saying that Christians are hypocrites, but he's very vague about what that means. So when we, you know, in our circles, when we talk about, like, Christian hypocrisy, it has to do with, like, choosing a hypothetical religion over, like, actual people's lives and, you know, choosing to persecute people based on some imaginary concept that you've decided on in your head. But in this movie, he is just like, so are you a phony or a hypocrite or a fake? And it's like, what a fake what he's he hasn't said anything about what he believes or what he does or what he stands for you can't be if one of you if like a stranger came over to my house i wouldn't be like you don't believe in anything because they haven't told me anything about themselves what are you a nihilist no i just haven't started talking yet yeah so are you religious no well, here's why I know your religion is dumb. Like, wh- who do, do I need to be here for this? Like, are you just doing a monologue? Yes, Larry could be bullying a cardboard cutout with the same veracity as he is bothering. <laughs> and like, oh, okay, here's what I, I would love. I don't know if you guys keep track of things like this, but this sort of um, your stereotypes in a Christian movie, like this sort of reverse straw man argument that Christian movies put on atheists. So he says, the problem with Christians is the Bible isn't real to you, man. And I don't know what that means. Yeah. What is he accusing them of? What is he like lauding himself for? I don't understand. I, he does, I don't think he knows right. The movie doesn't know right away. Eventually, I think they accidentally kind of fall backwards into the idea that, okay, Christians don't actually believe what it says in the Bible if they did and they really thought me, an atheist, was going to go to hell forever, they'd try harder to convert me. Yeah. Right? Right. Which is like an old pendulette thing, I guess. Yeah, he, fi- he finds his <laughs> their way. He finds his way there eventually. But that's not what he's saying. No, the first two stops along the way are like, you know what I hate about Christians is you're too handsome and yeah. generous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
your penises are too big and your women get too many <laughs> orgasms. It's terrible. Yeah, it's like he's being asked his weakness in, a, in an interview. He's like, oh, I care too much. I work too hard. I'm a perfectionist. Oh, my God. Love Jesus. The Bible ain't real to you, man. Like, it just, it, it's a nothing statement. It means nothing. And also, when he, like, fucking got into this dude's face over the slight of dot 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 sitting down in the same restaurant as him or whatever yes he gets up in his face and i just thought the greatest trick that men ever pulled was pretending that anger is an, um, an emotion so when they call women <laughs> emotional they're like yeah you don't have control of your emotions and they punch a wall and they're like that's not an emotion that's just manliness <laughs> yeah he's he manages to again jesus never answers any of these questions but somehow Larry manages to work himself up into a screaming fervor where he's screaming an inch from the guy's face. Am I going to hell when I die? Jackson comes out, right? And like sees what's happening, sees one of his customers screaming at a complete stranger who he might assume will tip <laughs> and just goes like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry about him. And I was like, I, I want to be a jerk to Jackson here, but run your restaurant don't let your customers just attack randos who walk through your door yeah there are a few moments in this when larry should have been physically restrained by many people and everybody is <laughs> yeah. just kind of letting it roll and seeing what happens like oh let's let's just watch this play out i want to see i want to see what the little guy no, says <laughs> he's terrified he needs to go to jail now yeah this like, man needs right to be away. in jail immediately like truly they need mandated reporters at this place that poor woman who yeah. complained about him and his Bible in her Bible study class. We need mandated reporters all over the place, you guys. This is not okay. <laughs> right. So what is it? It's just oh, this man, a monster. Also, you mentioned the reverse straw man argument thing, mm -hmm. which yes, they absolutely did. And then they also do just the straight up straw man. Like the the people who made this movie are like, all right, well, what are what are atheists like? We we're having an atheist antagonist. Let's let's mm. get that going. And the thing they landed on, I just wrote this to remind myself, the movie thinks that atheist means like angry milk factory worker ruining a nice night at the Waffle House for Jesus Christ <laughs> of Nazareth. That's what they wrote. Yep. Which like Laverne Shirley worked at a milk factory like they were perfectly happy and had thriving social lives. I don't understand why this guy is blaming the milk factory on everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do Laverne and Shirley jokes work in the year of our Lord 2022? <laughs> oh, yeah. It works for me. Don't worry. Our audience, you, again, you're back. You're in a safe space here with your Laverne and Shirley jokes, Jessica. <laughs> Just don't say that people run out of hospice days and you are safe in our audience's hands. <laughs> All right. Great. Okay. So that insane interaction is over. Larry sits back down. And his friends again are like, nice, you harassed that guy so atheistically. Good job, atheist. <laughs> Woo, atheism. Hey, you know, uh, now that we just mock that guy for his religion, do you want to just sort of go around and share our feelings about <laughs> the end? That's, that's, yeah, that's, what, <laughs> that's what happens here. They have a moment of atheist doubt. I <laughs> so Larry says, uh, you guys going to hell? I'm not going to hell. And the rest of them are like, there's, there's no hell, right? Right? Mm. Right? Right? <laughs> it's like a scary movie where the popular kid turns to the attractive girl to be like, come on, everyone knows haunted houses aren't real. Oh, my God. And then they basically <laughs> do like that push pull zoom on Larry's face where he starts doing this, like what is clearly his audition monologue of like, <laughs> is hell real? People are down there and there's so many of them and they're screaming and they can't get out. <laughs> are they screaming? They can't get out. Like. Uh, this motherfucker spirals so quickly. He needs a mood stabilizer stat. Yeah. This man is needs to be medicated. Just a little Lexapro for Larry, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and so it also the thing about these moments in Christian movies is like it is putting literally putting the fear of God into our hearts and putting the fear of hell into our hearts. And then they like always have this moment of like, oh my God, hell is real real, and it's scary because the only way the Christian church knows how to get people into a church is by bullying them and threatening them, apparently. So when he's realizing this and he's like, oh my God, it sounds terrible. I'm like, yeah, dog, it is fully fucked up to teach people <laughs> that this is the result, this burning, this hell is a result of not following their laws to the letter, including thought crimes. 
And this would be the result. You'll go to hell. So kids have zero impulse control and they're going to hear this week after week. And so what happens when they cut class or have a crush on a boy or cheat on a math test like everybody does as children? But they every time they do one of these, it's been drilled into their head that, well, now you're going you have sacrificed your eternal soul for all time because you were late home from curfew. <laughs> yeah. Right. And my, my favorite thing about these moments in the movies, right, where they try to do the scary hell monologue is there's always got to be a moment where they don't acknowledge how fucked up their worldview is. Yeah. Right. So like you said, Larry's doing his Oscar bit, right? They're mm-hmm. burning and screaming at the flame and the terror mm-hmm. for your consideration. And then he just turns to him and he's like a good and normal way to think about the world. <laughs> I definitely want to subscribe to that fun notion, actually. Sign me up. Where's that bibble you keep talking about? Right. Because keep in mind that if that was anything else, right? If you do that monologue about anything else except religion, they gently put you into a straitjacket and get you the help they need. Yep. Truly. He needed it so bad. <laughs> yeah, he, he actually reads the pamphlet here. That's how they present this. And we, we get to watch Larry. We, we get to watch a Christian actor playing Larry try to act like an atheist who's acting like he's not scared of the hell pamphlet that, <laughs> and it's slowly mm-hmm. occurring to him. So he's mm-hmm. like nine levels in and he's, he's very confused. He doesn't know what to do. And he's just reading it being like, what, a, you know, we're all sinners. What if there is a hell? Hold on. Wait a second. Yeah, right. It's almost literally, wait a minute. Yeah. Just like that. And then all three of them just like look at each other at the same time. And we get, <laughs> we get some really silly music too. We get spooky music. It's spooky guys, music. It's yeah. music. Just like these three piano keys know what you did last summer. Your yeah. fucking <laughs> Catholic school middle teacher dressed as the devil could be cackling in a mirror and mm. it would make it would be as serious <laughs> as this music is. I have written down in my notes that he says nine out of ten church people in hell are church members. Did either of you clock that? Yes, yeah, just that, that is what he said. Have you, is that a thing people say? Is that like a known thing? No, of like, I think uh, that's an OG Larry original. As an atheist, <laughs> I just announced that to diners full of people. Whenever I go to Denny's, basically, I'm like 90% of hell is Christian people because obviously. And just the way he delivered it, I didn't know how he felt about the fact that because at first he was like kind of snide about it. And th- what is this movie? Why did I spend oh. so much of my... <laughs> It just seems to me that all he is saying is even if you go to church and do all of these things, you have a 90% chance of still ending up in hell and you don't even get to fuck on earth. So, like, what are we doing here? Yeah, they don't know. Jesus Christ of Nazareth doesn't know what to say at that point. He just looks over and he's like, fuck, yeah, it's probably a lot of people in hell. Are subs- they would say they're Christian. <laughs> is it Jehovah's Witnesses who have the 144,000 people in heaven rule? Is yep, that Jehovah's that's Witnesses? The J- that's the Jehovah's. Oh, there's a there's a hard limit? Yeah. yeah. It's like Bitcoin? Did you not know this? Yeah. Or it's not like Bitcoin. It's like iota. <laughs> Listen, I've gone the last five years not understanding what Bitcoin was, and now that it's gone, you cannot make me learn it now. <laughs> Heath, you've never made our podcast a less safe space than when you tried to relate to Bitcoin. <laughs> Sorry, it's like... My mm. dude, read the room, okay? <laughs> Give me a horse metaphor. Jessica, I'm just trying to be friendly, yeah. Jessica. <laughs> Do it horses. Do it horses. And then lead us into the third act. Oh, Horse boy. metaphor. So horses... <laughs> uh, no, nope. Imagine if all the horses were on one long chain. <laughs> <laughs> it's like money made of horses. Yeah. Okay, so... In terms of this actual movie, I, I'm not even sure when it happened, but somewhere along the way, there was a slight shift in momentum for these atheist milk people. Kind of snuck up out of nowhere. So No, it didn't. It was really obvious. Uh, was it not? So it was, I thought it's not. It was, there was writing. music. Do you remember was the music? Do you were talking about the music? Was it super Do you remember the music? Are you confused obvious? again? <laughs> okay. Wait, I'm so sorry. Um, well, the really, Keith, really obvious Keith, thing that you're happened. You're confused again. We're gonna- <laughs> You're right. It was pretty obvious. I I need to re-examine my worldview as an atheist. So I'm going to need a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will rational arguments from the atheism diner team win the day with Jesus Christ? Will Jesus leave a pamphlet instead of a tip? Will we get to watch Jackson beat 
Jesus Christ to death with a spatula and make me very happy for that moment? Mm -hmm. Find out the answer to these questions and more. No, he won't. He won't. When we return for the scattered, smothered, and covered conclusion of Late One Night. It's a Waffle House reference. I would watch a uh, John Wick movie about Jackson finally losing his shit. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Where's that Kickstarter? Hey, Jessica. Yes, Eli? Would you ever wear headphones while riding a horse? Probably not. Well, what if I told you there was a wireless earbud made especially for horse riding? Raycon wireless earbuds. That seems super specific. No, 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 no. They sound incredible. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me. Plus, Raycons offer three sound profiles to match what you're listening to, plus noise isolation and awareness mode, so you can choose between being immersed in sound or being able to hear your surroundings when you need to. So you can hear a horse if it does its mating call. Horses don't have mating calls. I, Heath Enright, personally, use my Raycons when I'm walking around, working out, or even longboarding, and I personally recommend them. Raycons give you eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. Then, when you need to charge, it's super easy. You can even do it wirelessly. And this is a huge selling point. With Raycons, you get the same quality audio as other premium audio brands, but at half the price. Yes, really. So check out Raycons wireless earbuds. My guess is that you're going to want to leave them a five-star review. Go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to score 15% off by Raycon.com slash gam. Raycons, horse headphones for horses and the people who ride them. I feel like you might not get paid for this ad. The truth will out, Jessica. (laughs) Excuse me, sir. Do you know that Jesus loves you? Why, yes, I do. Uh, And and you know he died so that you could live forever? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. Okay, and... Do you know, if you dedicate your life to him, you can live by his side forever in heaven eternally. I do know that, yes. I am saved and I have dedicated my life to Christ. Sh- Great. Okay, wonderful. Sorry, I, j- I have no idea what to do at this point. Nobody ever said uh, all yeses before any of my questions. Sure, sure, I bet. Yeah. You want to go do some heroin? Yes, heroin. Okay, awesome. Awesome. We can talk about Jesus while we do the heroin together. Already know about Jesus, man. Right, right. Ah, sorry. We got just the heroin then. Yep. Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we're back. When we left off, it was very subtle, very subtle. But the word of God from that pamphlet might have made Larry start thinking. So he yells at Jackson to hurry up with the chicken sandwich so Jesus can do some more saving and they can talk some more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is finally going to speak up. This is where he tells everybody that um, sinners are spiritually dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this starts because this starts because Larry says, yeah, Jesus is going to get some, some people newborn. Right. <laughs> this is the first time Jesus actually says something kind of a little bit speak up He's like, it's born again, you stupid fuck. <laughs> Which the rebirth joke was extremely stupid. Like, that's not what... It, it reminds me of when, like, people try to write fake ransom notes, and they're like, oh, I'll, miss, <laughs> I'll misspell inevitable. That will shoot them <laughs> off the track. Like, that's truly what it just felt like to me. <laughs> yeah. This is how they misunderstand <laughs> us. They use random words for things that are unrelated. Ha <laughs> ha, got you, atheists again. Right, yeah, and the table of atheists, they're all like, what's born again? What's Bibble? Yeah, it's more of that. It's more of that nonsense. I also left myself a note. Hi, it's me from 30 minutes later. It got dark and I got a new laptop and I couldn't figure out how to turn on the backlit keyboard. Anyway, I had hopes for tonight and it's fucking 9 p.m. This is interminable. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 31 minute runtime that was interminable. Yes. Inter- mm-hmm. you, I could not believe how long. Like, it, it felt so... So long. Okay, the what he describes is that literally what they mean by born again? Is that we're just like basically ghosts walking around in like human shells without a soul and Okay. 
I'm so glad you asked that. Yeah, we're born sinners that are soulless until we get born again. I think that's what they're claiming. Well, I tried to look this up. I was like, that can't possibly be what (laughs) born again means. So I Googled, what does born again mean? Mm -hmm. And turns out there are as many answers as there are denominations of Christianity. Well, that tracks. And they're all pretty sure they've got the one definition. So you're born again. What is the functional difference between like being a born again Christian and like getting confirmed to the Catholic Church? Are you still like relinquishing your sins or whatever? Great question. It Great depends question. who you ask on that one, because some yeah, of those people are saying the other ones are going to hell for sure. Uh, yeah. All of the people are saying that the other ones are going to hell for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, he gets them with his uh, their spiritually dead zinger. And then he's like, OK, but what about the people who are jumping around on TV? And Jesus is like, they're stupid. And that's where I was like, OK, movie. What? What side are you on? Because I'm pretty what sure. What is our point of view, movie? <laughs> Jesus is looking for a nice, quiet dedication of soul to him. At one point, Jesus says, you know, most people, it's really sad. Yeah, everybody's born a sinner. Most of them don't even know they're going to hell uh, if they don't get born again. And then Larry is like, hey, doesn't that doesn't that make God a giant asshole? And <laughs> Jesus Christ has to be like, ah, I'm going to answer a different Um, question because it's a cut. Can we cut that fucks up the movie, dude? What are you doing? His his response is literally, you should read the book of John from the the Bible. (laughs) He truly was like, just read the Bible, my dude. And it's like, it's so long and dense and stupid and has (laughs) ofs just apparently shoved wherever ofs don't belong. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The the placement of the ofs is you're really bothered (laughs) by. Listen, I'm a writer. That's all I bring to the table. So if somebody's going to abuse the English language and have a bad point of view, no, not on my watch. Jessica, don't you put yourself down like that. You bring Laverne and Shirley references. You bring putting Heath down for bringing up Bitcoin. You bring so much to this podcast. No one talks about Jessica like that on this show. Not even Jessica. (laughs) So then he says that all the denominations in Christianity are meaningless, which again made me very much ask who this movie is fucking for. Yeah. I don't know what kind of like medium Christian that also believes in damnation is the long tail marketing for this film. But this is where Larry's, this is, we get Larry's greatest zinger. He's like, yeah, all the denominations are meaningless. And Larry goes, what was that? I can't hear you. I have something in my ear. End of roast. That's it. It's just, I can't hear you. Wait, I missed that. I was so confused. I was like, oh, what's in his ear? Are they going to address this? (laughs) No, never. No, never. That was just a snappy ear based rejoinder. Like I was talking about before. That was Larry being like, can't hear you. Boys, I watched this movie twice and missed it both times. (laughs) Couldn't hear you. You got something in my ear. Everybody do the ooh ooh thing, please. Now, Rabble, Rabble, anybody? Got him. Uh (laughs) There it is. Thank you. Thank you. High five. Okay. And I have another item for our list of like atheist straw man, reverse straw man bullshit. Oh, I'm ready. It's when Larry says, when I die, I'll be standing next to God. And like, my brother in Christ, this is not what atheists believe. We're not (laughs) mad at God. Not believing in something means we believe it's not real. I don't believe in the tooth fairy because I learned it's not real. Not because I was mad that Brienne got five dollars for her tooth and i only got one (laughs) yeah that's not how history works you know like when i grow up and i can stay up as late as i like i'm gonna confront that tooth fairy and tell her just how little i believe in her tooth fairy needs to learn how inflation works you really need to buy uh, whatever it's fine this far no further tooth fairy (laughs) also true or false larry is like one let's go brandon bumper sticker away from calling jackson boy or something (laughs) yes again like i said he is rude to Jackson in a way that feels so racist and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be racist or just the fact that he is like treating a black man poorly just kind of reads even worse yeah boy I want to watch Jackson like finally lose his mind on Larry and I do not condone violence and yet Mm, if there's okay see and you're back out again here i was defending you that cutting room loving floor. you welcome you into this space this is a violent space you're the friendly ones we're the unfriendly okay, ones okay 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 i'll get myself in line 
Just name which Supreme Court justice you would kill first. Like if you could get away with it. Amy Coney Barrett. Love it. Really fast. Yes. Oh, I've thought about it a lot. <laughs> I'm not, I, hey, uh, CIA or whatever, this is a joke. I'm actually not going to murder anybody. I don't even think I could go hunting. But I've actually thought a lot of, oh, actually, okay. So Kavanaugh I'm, for me. So I'm torn between Clarence Thomas. Ooh. Just, just for like just the moral vengeance of it all. Mm. Because he is just a nightmare human. But I just think from a practical standpoint, Amy Cohen Barrett is younger. the youngest. Yeah. She's like mm-hmm. my age. She's like 28. I'm not 28. So <laughs> it was two jokes I tried to make and neither of them worked. <laughs> but she's so young she's gonna outlive me on that supreme court so like yeah let's open up that seat i don't need this cunt fucking with my uterus for the next 50 years of mm. my life love it love it can i say cunt on your show oh you say whatever the fuck you want on okay. our show i just really like that <laughs> yeah word. don't worry noah absolutely started the cut after you said amy coney barrett so don't even worry <laughs> don't even trip dog yeah, you want her right. address they put it on tiktok and i have it right here in my safe folder I love Gen Z. <laughs> like they, oh boy, they're gonna. I know it's bullshit. Them up. To, yeah, kids are all right. Like, I know it's bullshit to lean on younger people um, to rescue us, but I did my best. You guys, can yeah, dox them into oblivion now. Or I'm tired. You kids do. I'm so tired. Save me. I have knee problems. <laughs> like we just, <laughs> yeah. It's just not. I can't anymore. You guys. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, Larry calls another timeout on the crazy argument with Jesus and Team Atheism huddles up again in their little booth so they can talk through the new information they just got about being born again. And they, they like actually huddle up and they're like, all right, what's, what's going on? What are we saying next? It is as though they've just lost a karate fight to Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> they are now trying to talk through their next plan of attack. All right, we need to learn how to sweep the leg. What are we doing? What's going on? Yeah. I will say my favorite part of this this terrible movie comes up in this part. They give me a little poultice called a dangling modifier joke. And boy, oh boy. <laughs> this is your favorite part of the movie. We love dangling modifier jokes okay. in this family. The joke is as follows. Ahem. <laughs> they were asking about like, oh, is Jesus coming back? And he said, oh, John said he's coming back soon. When? Tomorrow? Jesus coming back tomorrow? No, John told me tomorrow. Like, <laughs> first of all, that joke didn't work. Wait, how did it work? It did not. Because he said, Jesus is coming back. Oh, yesterday. When did he tell you? Jesus is coming back yesterday? No, he told. Okay, the joke doesn't work. Sorry, guys. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> they failed. It's, it's the movie's fault and not yours. It's the movie's fault. No, it was like, when is Jesus is coming back? Riley told me Jesus is coming back when today Jesus is coming back today. Oh, that's what it is. No, no. Riley told me Jesus is coming back today. Yeah, that's the bit. That's the joke. We got it. Everybody got that. They nailed it. They nailed it. Be fair to the movie. They nailed that. Okay. At least the internal logic. <laughs> yeah. But then he brings it over to Jesus. He's like, hey, when is Jesus coming back? And again, the movie tries to take itself seriously. He's like, soon there will be trouble and <laughs> lies and upsetting in this. You guys know scorpions and <laughs> fucking locusts and horses? I know that's confusing. It's going to be rough. Yeah. Okay, listen. Larry and his henchmen, if they had a lick of sense between the three of them, you need to stop fucking with this skinny white dude with a serial haircut and like 60% of a goatee who is quietly speaking in proverbs and adages that are getting increasingly dark and intense and yeah. violent. <laughs> this man is about to snap and you know he has an AK or whatever on him somewhere. Yeah. If this wasn't a Christian movie, he's wearing Larry's skin as a coat by the end of it. Oh, boy. And then, of course, Larry says... It's just a scare tactic, which again, Jesus goes, you should be scared. And I wanted so badly for Larry to be like, yeah, that's that's what I said. It's a scare tactic. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. scary. It's supposed to be scary. <laughs> he also talks a lot about, Larry also talks a lot about, it's just a business. It's just a scam, which is true. And also they don't really rebuke at all. No, not at all. 
So it's just a little peak of self-awareness here, I think, that we're seeing in the church, maybe? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Larry's like, religion's a scam. It's just to make money. Everybody's just out to make a buck. You're trying to scare us into giving money. And Jesus has a moment to respond there. And he's like, Jesus is real. I'm not disputing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. We're offering a really good deal this month. What was Jesus supposed to be teaching them? He just, like, tells them about, like, shit that most people know, right? Like, you go to any church and they can tell you X, Y, and Z. Why isn't this Jesus magical in any way? Or like, why doesn't Jesus reveal something to Larry that puts context into like the abuse he suffered as a child or whatever? Like, what is the point of this movie? Just have him do a fucking card trick. Anything. Something pops up in his Check your wallet for the pamphlet. Like anything like that. (laughs) Do a cutaway and all of a sudden he's drinking wine. What? We don't serve wine here. What? I know. It's just like, it's not hard. <laughs> yep. It's not hard, but they still manage not to land it uh, uh. nevertheless. But that's okay. Because at long last, Jesus's chicken sandwich is here. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, also they keep saying the truth will make you free. That's not the expression, guys. Nope. <laughs> I believe it's set. That's not the expression. I believe it's set. <laughs> What are we doing? Why don't you dangle another fucking modifier, assholes? Uh, <laughs> Soon the truth truth is of the freeness of yeah. you. Yeah, the truth will, will set of free. They might as well audibly leave out an Oxford comma at this point. I, yeah, I'm furious. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow leave that out audibly. I don't know. Uh, I feel like you must know I have an Oxford comma t-shirt. Do you? I just have nice. oh, yeah, sure do. Guys, the, the love connection on this episode. Right? <laughs> Look, we started as friends. You guys this are is, both dorks. You are our sister now. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so, we're going to actually... T- they're going to try to finish the movie, and they, they won't. It's the best. The movie's going to try to end itself, and it won't be able to do anything. It's amazing. It does not resolve. <laughs> so the chicken sandwich is up, and Jackson mm. is like, Hey, Larry, you got to take a quick time out on screaming at the stranger at my counter, please. And then Larry's like, he was preaching to me. You start, like, they have this whole back and forth. He finally sits back down. Jesus is about to start eating. And then Larry gets right back up and he's like, why aren't you sharing any fucking food with us if you're Jesus, if you're all Christian? Oh, my God, I forgot about this. And just starts, fuck, like, fully fucking with his food. Oh, yeah, he picks it up and, like, throws it back on the plate. It's insane. What's great about it is it's supposed to be this like incredibly climactic moment, right? Where he ruins Jesus's chicken sandwich, but also they only had one chicken sandwich to work with. So it was very obvious that he was too rough with the chicken sandwich at the first take. And they were like, hey, hey, Gary, okay, that's the only chicken sandwich we've got for the set. So and yeah, Steve or whoever was like, I'm going to eat this at the end. I ordered this from it's this is mine. Yeah, it's literally just my lunch. Could you guys fucking chill out? Got this on DoorDash. Yeah. (laughs) So he ends up in the scene, this big climactic ruining Jesus's lunch moment. He just sort of like gingerly picks the sandwich up and then puts it back down. (laughs) (laughs) One of my favorite things that I noticed about this is the character development. You know, you introduce a character, their speech, their clothes, their hair all tells, you know, the audience gives you signals about who this person is and, and all this stuff. Of course. And all the writers of this movie did to like demonstrate that these men were like low class or whatever was just have them say ain't got all the time. <laughs> yep. And are like, yep, nailed it. Fucking control S a good day's work as usual. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's all they did. They're like, okay, okay, okay. There's lots of ways we can do this. We can get a hat that like says something. We can like the way they talk, what they drink, what they eat could all indicate this. No. Yeah. No, no, no. Just the word ain't. No, I think we're just going to have them say ain't got and people will kind of get it. Just ain't got and like heavy (laughs) use of ellipses when they're talking. They're like Mm -hmm. constant, like they're like they're in our ads. They're like, what's born again? Like (laughs) so many many of those. Yeah. These dumb atheists don't know anything. Right. So they ruin his sandwich. He goes back to sit at the table. There's this moment of tension. And I want to know if you guys felt the same thing. Jesus like gets up real slow and puts on his jacket and walks over to the table. And honestly, if this movie had ended with Jesus Christ of Nazareth just beating the shit out of these three factory workers, (laughs) I might love this movie and become Christian. Four stars would recommend. Thank you. Fine holiday fun. But no, instead he goes, 
How old will you be in a hundred years? Okay, what the fuck does this mean? God, this is so stu- It's so clumsily written, right? What he means is you're going to die. Yeah, right. You're going to be in hell or heaven and you don't know yet where that will be. Right. Oh! Yes. But instead, the dialogue is this. How old are you? 32. How old will you be in a hundred years? Pause. 132. Oh, yeah. That math was <laughs> no, tough. no, no, but there's literally a pause while the actor is like, <laughs> carry the 100, 132. Also, this man is 45 if he's a day. He is yeah. not 32. No, he's not 32. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like fucking Toad from X Men. That's what he looks like. Oh, um, yeah. Like, does Toad like put on a disguise so he can hang out with the normies because that's yes. like, it's like a really shitty wig? <laughs> yeah. So then they then they have what I think is the best back and forth of the movie where he's like, God loves you. And he starts to walk away. The music starts to swell. And wow. Larry's like, no, he doesn't. And he's like, yes, he does. <laughs> no, he Rotten. doesn't. Yes, he does. These characters, I counted five repetitions of no, he doesn't. Yes, he does. That's 10 lines back and forth that don't change. I, it's just that. It's I so thought stupid. we were about to devolve into a uh-huh, not a... Uh, like, I thought that was going to be the end of what we were doing. I thought it was going to turn into a Bugs Bunny trick where he doubles up and then he's like, yes, he does. Fuck. Okay. God, God, God damn it. God, uh, I'm a Christian. Sneaky Christians. <laughs> I literally thought I had accidentally hit the back 30 seconds button on my iPad. I was like, there's no way they repeat it that often. There was a couple of moments that they like repeated lines verbatim that I thought I had gotten slightly too high and was confused again. <laughs> yeah, I hate that kid. Yeah. Oh, that's just the echo from earlier yeah, in the movie. Well, it's just, like, and then like, there's callbacks to like, it, it's just very strange. It's a very strange movie. Yeah. But he's, yes, he doesn't know he does. And this is, again, Larry's second Oscar bid. He's like, oh, yeah. Well, if God loves me, how come I had such a hard childhood and mm. no girl wants to fuck me? Mm-hmm. And, blah, blah, blah. and she, by the way, Jesus's answer is to walk out silently. <laughs> That's it. It's the best. So, yeah, Larry's screaming about his sad life, trying to bring up the problem of evil here. And he clearly improvised grabbing Jesus by the coat and getting right up in his face. And his face got way too close. And the Jesus actor clearly could not stop laughing. Like, yep. In the shot, we see him being like, you're an idiot. (laughs) Stupid movie. Yeah. I have a few notes on this particular scene. First of all, give us those notes. I need those notes. They let Larry verbally assault this man for so long before stepping in to pull them apart. Yep, the whole movie. Also, the out of all of these movies, how many times would you say the atheist's father walked out on him? Oh, wow. Yeah, no, that's a bingo square for sure. That's that's how atheism happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you're manic out. I forgot. Talks about, like, scrubbing toilets, which, like, it's a fine and useful job. There's nothing wrong with that job. You're classist as fuck. People need to scrub toilets. People need to look at milk. It's part of the economy. He definitely has some some minor things in his problem of evil thing that I was not sympathetic to. Mm-hmm. He's like, how come my father walked out on me? And I'm like, yeah, no, that's pretty bad. And he's like, how come ladies don't like me? And I'm like, I don't think that really yeah, falls into look in the problem. mirror a it's little actually, bit. It's but... really good that that they don't like you. We, sh- we saw you. Maybe you just yeah. ask a question. Talk to them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he mentions that he's never had a girlfriend. And I want to be clear that I don't believe, I believe that virginity is a societal construct that has no meaning. But this guy's definitely got his V card, right? This guy's <laughs> oh, for never sure. got inlaid. Yeah, no, he came in the day after he fucked a mailbox and was like, guys, I find, what do you mean that doesn't count? <laughs> Not sure if you're talking about the actor or the character, but yes, absolutely correct. Yes, yeah, the answer is yes. So yeah, so he's like, hey, if God loves me, why is my life so sad? And Jesus sadly walks out. But before he does, he whispers something to Jackson. This is where we get the big conclusion, the the best worst answer to the problem <laughs> of evil. He's like, oh, what was wrong with that guy? And Jackson says... Jesus just paid your bill. <laughs> and you can see the actor who plays Larry being like, is that, is that, that's the end of the movie? I don't have any more lines. <laughs> Are we done? I think that you somewhat misrepresented their interaction because my read of it was they were trying to chase after Jesus, but were so hung up on not paying the bill that they couldn't leave. And so he was trying to leave and was like, I need to pay before I can leave because suddenly he's very concerned about being a courteous customer to Jackson who he's been 
<laughs> yelling at all night. Yelling at and threatening, yeah. And so he, and they're they're yelling at him. What's the bell? What's the bell? What's the bell? What's the bell? And then, like for thirty seconds, he he allows these terrible men to scream in his face before finally being like, "Jesus paid." And it's like you could leave with that and really have saved yourself some uh, spit in your face, bud. Like you don't have to pause for dramatic effect if you don't want to. No, you're unsafe. <laughs> <laughs> But that, just to be clear, that was the movie's answer to the problem of evil, by the way, is like, your life has been bad, but don't worry. Christ nailed himself to a cross for you, so you're square, it's easy. But <laughs> Jesus paid for your $4 cheeseburger and your Coke. Yes. Congratulations. Are you Christian now? Did you be Christian now? They actually show us another Bible quote here, Romans 5, eight, but based on the movie, Romans 5, 8 is saying like, okay, Christ died for us and our sins. That is in the quote from Romans, but also maybe bought us a burger at a diner, paid for that. So like in the meta, do you even think they thought about a metaphor? Oh, uh, no. That the metaphor is th the sins are the burger? The sins are the burger. Wait, will you read that quote for me again? Oh, Romans 5, 8. It said yeah. Jesus Christ fucking died for us. I think oh. something like that. <laughs> No, I didn't write down the exact quote. Blah, blah, blah. Jesus died for you. <laughs> yeah. I, cause I, honestly, I want to look this up because maybe this is like going to unlock. This is going to unlock the movie for the us. The movie do it. for me. Live okay, Google Romans with us here on this podcast, eight. folks. I also have the Wikipedia pulled up. There's nothing interesting there. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, since we have been justified through, this is not a direct translation. This is just somebody editorializing, which is bullshit. How'd they do with like modifiers and stuff? I don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Wait, isn't that the, why is, isn't that John's 3.16? No, apparently it's Romans 5.8. John 3.16 is. John 3.16 is for, for God, God so loved the world. That, yeah, that, he, that he gave him his only begotten child. son that he might die so Something, something. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal yeah, so life. I got King James, King James Version. But God commandeth his love towards us. God damn it. In that, while we were, oh God, this is the perfect <laughs> quote to end this episode. I really want you to listen to this, Jessica. I want you to try and diagram this fucking sentence. <sighs> but God commandeth his love towards us, comma, in that, comma, while we were yet sinners, comma, Christ died for us, period. What is the but referring to? What's the, how is, what's the however to start that? <laughs> to whomst God did die for. I just. You. I, oh, cross references. John 3, 16. There you yeah. go. 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Like Burger King 4, <sighs> 8. Your way right away. There you go. <laughs> So these people are all reading this gobbledygook, but they're like, um, I can't remember pronouns. Like, what is going on <laughs> with the brain capacity of people who read, who seem to be able to understand this very dense, archaic writing, but like, don't understand that, like, gender is not a binary. I don't know. I just, uh, I just have a lot of, a lot of questions. Great concerns. questions. Great These concerns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I learned nothing. I learned nothing from that. Yeah. It, I don't know. Honestly, it seems like if you're not atheist, Jesus won't even buy you a burger. So it's a weird message. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that's going to do it for late one night, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie. So, Eli, what's on deck? Well, Heath. It's a listener request we've gotten literally since we started the show. Next week, we will be reviewing the Disney animated film, Prince of Egypt. <laughs> okay. Isn't that, was that good? We're going to find out. Probably wasn't. <laughs> I had to guess. Hey, gang, how come you bring other people on and see like real Disney movies and I keep <laughs> coming on and watching these like YouTube bullshit things? <laughs> Hey, Jess, you want to be on next week? Do Prince of Egypt? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. So Steve Martin is in that one. Yeah. Yep. Steve Musical Martin. numbers. Disney Pixar something. I'm jealous. 
I'm not going to listen out of spite. All right. Well, with that to look forward to for us and not Jessica, we're going to bring episode 360 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Jess for real for joining us. And if anybody wanted to hear more from you, where should they go? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jess Blumke, J-E-S-S-B-L-U-E-M-K-E. You can always hear me on the Friendly Atheist podcast. Uh, we drop usually on Fridays-ish. Ooh. Cooper Duper is the other podcast um, I did with my husband. It is complete now. We rewatched all of Twin Peaks and all of David Lynch's catalog. My husband's a diehard Twin Peaks fan. And I have also seen it and have a <laughs> no I like it just not in the same way he does and yeah that's I think I like all spending I got for time you with David Lynch <laughs> <laughs> I am adjacent to David and we did it all through the pandemic as like a project and it really made things bleak for a second there I'm like sure. oh okay we're gonna watch erase our head and then not leave the house for another six months Neat. it's December <laughs> there's not gonna be sun again <laughs> Cool. Yikes. Well, thanks, David Lynch, as usual. Okay. <laughs> so check all that stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places, also check out Dear Old Dads. Eli, where do, where do you go to? Where's Dear Old Dads? Dear Old Dads, all the podcast places. Look up the words Dear Old Dads. There you go. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Jessica and Eli, I'm Heath. Promise to work hard, turn another chunk next week. Until then... We'll leave you with the Animal House close. Larry got too close to an open flame and his synthetic wig went up like the Hindenburg. <laughs> and now he's vertical two-faced prowling the streets of this fake town and being aggressively unpleasant, but ultimately not physically violent to peaceful citizens. <laughs> so much good detail in his, his forward story. <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth went out to uh, get a pack of cigarettes and he hasn't been back for 2,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> the mysterious stranger tried to go across the street to Chick-fil-A for his second chicken sandwich, but ironically, it was closed because it was Sunday. <laughs> <laughs>